Mean to You by Miranda Walker was written for the National Association of Disabled Supporters as part of the Football for Everyone project. It was inspired by the experiences of disabled football fans who were interviewed by students from Deansfield Community School, Wolverhampton. It seems like a small question. Six words, seven syllables. She looks at me with inquiring eyes and her head tilted to one side. And I want to tell her, get her to see, really see, the magnitude of it all. But that's the nub of it for me, people seeing, or rather not seeing. Hidden disability, they call it. There are connotations. I mean, what do people hide? The things they're ashamed of, right? Things that provoke disapproval. And when the stuff you're hiding would change the fundamental way people view you, well, then you're deceptive. A cheat, simple as. Whether you mean to misrepresent yourself or not. She's written down the question and left a gap for the answer. Her pen's poised. Top's all mashed up. <laughs> Some things never change, do they? They might have smartphones and video games on tap, but when they're thinking, they still gnaw on a bick lid. I've kept her waiting too long, and it's starting to feel awkward. But the words don't come. That feeling's there, though. Same as ever, strong as ever. Just like the first time I went. The team step onto the pitch, but my mind's still in the car park. What happens in two hours' time, you idiot, when you're tired and you've got to walk all that way back to the car? Why can't you just park in a space with a wheelchair symbol and sod what people think? But it wasn't just the threat of dirty stares from people who don't know that you can't tell just by looking that made me drive past the dedicated bay. Or the shouting that time in the multi-story. Oi, there's nothing wrong with your legs, mate. Wait for a normal space like the rest of us. No. It's... It's just as much because I feel I don't belong there. I fly under the radar. I haven't earned the right. You can't go round acting like you're non-disabled, then take the precious few perks when it suits you. So, I'm uneasy in the disabled section, tucked behind the wheelchair users. As the ref blows the whistle, I weigh up the stand to me left. The ball's barely been kicked, and the fans are already standing. Well, I'd have had to do the same to see. <laughs> You'd have been exhausted, and you've got work to be fit for tomorrow. At least I can stay sitting and still see in here. It's true, though. That old adage, you can feel more lonely, more isolated in a crowd than you'll ever feel on your own. I'll give it a while, but, well, it's one hell of a crowd. Should have stuck to watching it on the telly. I'll make my way to the end of the row. If I leave now, I might still catch the finish on the box. I turn in time to see him go down. Number nine, Ian Johnston. John O. Sparked right out by the touchline. They know how to make a meal of it, these footballers. Rolling about in apparent agony one second, then up and flying down the wing the next. But this is different. He's lifeless. How cold. The medics are on, but it's not looking good. Bad head clash, people are saying, and did you see the angle of his neck when he fell? They bring on a stretcher, and I strain to see, but he's obscured from view by the medics. His teammates can see him all right, though, and I can see the looks on their faces. Stadium's quiet now. No one expected this. Slow minutes pass before the captain steps forward and gives the thumbs up to the manager. Is Jono all right then? We still can't see. But as they stretcher him off, he lifts a heavy arm up to the crowd and we clap, relieved. <laughs> the ref restarts the match, but our players are still shaken and City know they can seize the advantage. Come on, boys, settle in. Young Blake subbed on, keen, eyes shining. Those fresh legs get him his first touch. 
He makes a break and he's off up the centre. Go on, do it for Jono. He sees Kelly unmarked in the box and he's about to pass. City's defender gets in there though and it comes to nothing. It's all right, lad, you'll have him next time. Perhaps I will just sit back down for a bit, I think. Rest up for that walk back to the car. <clears throat> she clears her throat politely, and I realise she's still waiting for an answer. Sorry, I say. I was miles away then. Her head remains tilted, but concerned eyes replace the smile. It's OK, she says. We can skip this one if you like. No, I say. It's important, only it's hard to explain just how much. <sighs> it's nil-nil when Langdon gets possession and crosses to Kelly. He works hard to keep it. Defenders on him, grabbing at his shirt, but Kelly shakes him off and makes it to the box. I hold my breath as he turns and shoots. I think he'll score, but the goalie gets his fingertips to it, pushes it over the bar. Then it happens. As I exhale, I notice the bloke on me left and the girl on me right exhale at exactly the same moment. It's strange, like our lungs are joined and we're breathing as a unit. And somehow, as the goalie hoofs the ball right down to our danger zone, I know that we're in this together and that nothing else matters in the world. Ford's in possession when City slides in with a dirty challenge. Oh, we cry in perfect synchronicity. Not just the three of us, the whole of the stand. City's defending hard, but we're passing well. And as Kelly makes a break, we're with him every step of the way. Go on, son, go on. He gets his chance, but he rushes and it comes off the post. But Lockie's there. He turns, taps it, and it's in! He's starting to celebrate. And so are we, all the fans, hearts right round the stadium, fused in a moment of ecstasy. But a moment's all it is, as we see the linesman's flag. That was never offside, shouts the bloke to me left, and I forget myself, chip in. Have you bought your city season ticket yet, ref? And the bloke to me left, and the girl on me right, they're laughing. <laughs> laughing at something I said. As Kelly argues the toss, I look past the pitch, taking in hundreds of animated faces, each one backing him up. And I wonder if the things that divide us matter less than the things that unite us. And who knows what those things might be. You have to interact with the world. Find out for yourself because you certainly can't tell just by looking. Her voice catches me off guard. She smiles, repeats the question patiently. I was asking what going to football means to you, and this time I'm ready. Everything, I say. Bloody everything! Mean to You was written by Miranda Walker. Performed by Richard Kernow and featured students from Deansfield Community School.